Good morning. It's wonderful to see you today. So glad you can be here for Blanket Sunday. Uh, it comes once a year. We look forward to it so much. Uh, the ladies and uh, their helpers work so hard on this for months, and uh, we get to see the, the beauty of their handiwork. It's, it's all around us here, but I have to tell you, I was astonished as I walked down to the hall into the fellowship hall at all the blankets that are in there. And Sally's probably going to say this in a minute, but do treat yourself. When you leave here, go through the fellowship hall. It's astonishing in there. All that glory to God of handiwork for blessing children who need to feel the love of God in a time of sadness or crisis it's just such a beautiful thing don't you don't you just want to applaud now isn't that wonderful <laughs> look forward to hearing sally's uh report and also to seeing uh the the video um i want to mention to you about the service today um today we're going to be hearing the salvation message of john three sixteen. Once in a while, I hear people say, uh, you know, I grew up in such and such a church, and I never heard the salvation message. Um, that makes my heart sad. I don't know whether their preacher preached the salvation message and they didn't hear it, or whether they were listening and the preacher wasn't preaching it. I don't know. I've got a feeling that a part of what's going on there is that the Holy Spirit has to move in our hearts so that he opens our understanding to really hear the salvation message. But uh, today, I hope that it will be presented in a, in a lovely way and that uh, everyone will hear it. Many of us will hear it and rejoice in the salvation that we have and have had for many years. Some of us may hear it and say, I want that before I leave. And so I want to tell you now that at the end of the service, uh, there'll be a chance for you to come to the altar and pray and receive the assurance of salvation if that's something that you would like also want to mention to you this afternoon, uh, from 4.30 to 7.30, we'll have our uh, Connect class. It's our membership class, and if you want to get a little closer in terms of your understanding of salvation, or also in terms of connecting with the Lord Jesus, or also in terms of connecting with Duck Church, this class this afternoon is the one for you. And we only have one or two of these a year most years, so this is an important uh, one for you to come to if you feel led to. Love to have you. Now, uh, we have a funny sign from the United Methodist Men. Come on. I lost my way. <laughs> Today's the last day you can join or enter your ugly tie contest. And um, I think we have a couple of people here that are in the contest, they got their, maybe they have their ties on, they might be outside blowing in the wind. Uh, please remember this is for the scholarship for our youth, and we had a, uh, the good news is we had six children going through college last year, or this year, and the bad news is they hit us pretty good. So we're trying to redo <laughs> our funds, and uh, all checks are, for the scholarship fund are uh, tax deductible. Anybody want to stand up and show their ugly ties? Just waving the wind. Yeah. yeah, let's see those ugly ties. All right, come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't forget to vote for these guys. I tell you what, they deserve your vote, right? Thank you, sir. You deserve a vote, too. <laughs> Thank you, John. Yeah. We come now to our prayer time. Uh, Please remember Paul and Helen Ford in your prayers. Uh, I may have mentioned to you that uh, Paul's experimental treatments did not work. 
Yeah, uh, there was great hope with that, but it, it, they did a test and saw that it, it did not help. And so uh, they are coming to be with, you know, with their friends here in Southern Shores. So um, please remember them in prayer. Um, and uh, why don't you wave to them now in case they're watching uh, on TV. Hey, Paul and Helen, we love you. We're glad you're, you're home and we're praying for you. Uh, also, if you would, please remember John Park and his family in prayer. His mother died and they've gone up to Pennsylvania to, to be with uh, his dad and the rest of the family. So please remember them in prayer. Who else would you like for us to remember today on, on this side? Yes, Pam. My mother, Jenny. Thank you, Jenny. Bill Van Brunt. Thank you, Carol. Yes. Thank you. We love to remember Lois Green. Roy and Peggy Miller. Thank you. Is there anyone else on this side? Martha? Pat Fields and Lou Gregory. Glenn? Lucy Worley, who, as you may know, is home now. Uh, she was she was in hospital and rehab from November until uh, last Wednesday, right? Yeah, so um, she's doing better. I hear, I hear, well, she told me that they said that maybe, maybe, maybe there's a chance she might get off that oxygen she's on. And, of course, that's sort of keeping her confined, and she really would love to be with us here at church. So let's pray for Lucy to get so much better that she can get off the oxygen that she's on. And, Lynn, you have been such a friend to her. Thank you. Yes. Diana Hooper. Diana Hooper. Thank you. Is there anyone else on this side? How about from the choir? Anyone? Yes? Carol Welch. Carol Welch. Anyone else? Alex, let's bow in prayer. Lord Jesus, we're so happy to be in your house, a place where we feel the enormous love of our Heavenly Father, supporting us, embracing us, and giving us the gift of eternal life. We thank you for all the ways your people let that eternal life just overflow in love to family, friends, and neighbors. Uh, we look at these quilts and we feel that love. Uh, we pray for those whose names have been called either on our lips or in our hearts. And we ask, Lord, that you surround and fill and bless those who are hurting and in need with the grace and the power of your Holy Spirit. Lord, we also pray for our confirmands who are having their confirmation retreat at Camp Don Lee this weekend. And we ask that you bless this to their souls so that they respond more and more to you as they grow up in love and in faith, accepting the light that you bring as they travel the path of life. We pray, Lord, that they'll look back all their lives on this wonderful time of confirmation and that it'll be a blessing to them. Now, Lord, we beseech you to send the power of your Holy Spirit upon us gathered here out of love for you that we would feel and know your tender love and that we, we praise you with all of our heart and mind and soul. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The hymn is 297, Beneath the Cross of Jesus. Let's stand. <laughs>
You may be seated. I invite you to turn into your bullets into the prayer of confession. Let us confess our sins to Almighty God. Almighty God, Spirit of purity and grace, in asking thy forgiveness, I cannot claim a right to be forgiven, but only cast myself upon thine unbounded love. I can plead no merit or desert. I can plead no extenuating circumstances. I cannot plead the frailty of my nature. I cannot plead the force of the temptations I encounter. I cannot plead the persuasions of others who led me astray. I can only say, for the sake of Jesus Christ, thy Son, my Lord. Amen. Please continue in silent confession. We beseech thee, absolve thy people from their offenses, that through thy bountiful goodness we may be delivered from the bonds of those sins which by our frailty we have committed. Grant this, O Heavenly Father, for the sake of Jesus Christ, our blessed Lord and Savior, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We come now to the time for the dedication of the um, Linus quilts and I invite Sally Meyer to come up. Sally? You have heard me talk about these Linus quilts for many years. It started 19 years ago when a couple women from this church got together and said, what can we do in the winter? Let's make some quilts and find some children to give them to. And we found Project Linus. That is their mission, to take quilts for children who need them. A group meets here in January and February on Fridays. The women come, they get a pattern, they get fabric, they get batting, they go home and make the quilt. And the next week they come back and they show the quilt to great enthusiasm and praise. Um, the quilts are given locally to fire trucks, police, ICO, uh, the women's shelter, and any child who is in need. The project is more, is about more than just making the quilts. It's about fellowship, it's about support, it's about friendship. A group of women from this church welcome women from all over the Outer Banks. We love them, we share with them, we give them a, a purpose for making these quilts. That's what's most important, that we um, sh show our friendship and our fellowship to others. We have had a record year this year. We have made 495 quilts. <laughs> and as John said, they are here and decorating the fellowship hall. Anything that didn't move on Friday got a quilt on it. So here we are. Thank you, Sally.
Sally, thank you so much for your leadership with this. Uh, good things happen when leaders like you hold up a project and say, come on, let's have some fun together. Thank you for your leadership. And we want to thank everybody in this church and beyond this church that showed their love for the community by giving away such beautiful works of art that their heart was really into. So thanks to everyone. Can we have a prayer of dedication now? Lord, uh, all these quilts here and in the sanctuary and in the hall and in the fellowship hall are works of love from the heart and the hands for children close and far away who need to feel your love and the love of your church. We pray, Lord, that you would bless every one of these quilts that as they enfold a hurting child, your love would be felt. We pray that you bless the hands that put these quilts together and that you bless their hearts for all eternity. In Jesus' name, amen. And now if the ushers will come forward, we'll receive the morning tithes and offerings.
Heavenly Father, you are the great giver, and you fill our hearts with a desire to give to you and to our neighbors. We ask that you take these offerings that we make to you and bless them to be a blessing to others and the giving of them to be a blessing to us. Bless those who give and those who receive in Jesus' name. Amen. The hymn is 451. invite you to exchange signs of love and peace with one another. I invite you to stand as we affirm what we believe. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please remain standing for the reading of the gospel lesson, which is taken from John chapter 3, beginning with verse 14. Jesus said, And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of the only son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world and people loved darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light and do not come to the light so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. I went to the dentist a couple of weeks ago. Have you been lately? Not my favorite thing to do. Is it yours? I don't know which is worse, uh, the pain or the bill, right? Yeah, the bill. Yeah. Yeah. I hate going to the dentist. The only thing I hate worse than going to the dentist is having a toothache, <laughs> right? You know, I don't like to go to the dentist. Uh, I, and I know these days, I know when I go to the dentist and they do the x-rays, I know exactly what's going to happen next because I've gotten used to this. The dentist is going to come in. He's going to say, we looked at your x-rays. One of your teeth, take your pick, one of your teeth has a little hairline fracture in it. We should probably do an overlay to preserve that tooth. Now, whenever you want to, it's up to you. It, it's not urgent, but just wanted you to know. Well, when he told me that, like, I don't know, a couple of years ago, I thought, oh, okay, well, that's good information to have. You know, thanks very much. And I do like my dentist in spite of the fact that he went to Carolina. <laughs> By the way, congratulations, Carolina, on your win on Friday, and congratulations, Virginia, on your win last night. Yeah, I know it. Y'all should enjoy it while you can. Yeah. <laughs> I, I know y'all don't get to clap like that all that often, so this is a... <laughs> Oh, I tell you what, Virginia people are the nicest people in the world. Yeah. You, I mean, you know, you cannot root against Virginia. They're just the nicest folks. Anyway, so 
a couple years ago, I go to the dentist. He tells me that, you know, that song and dance about the cracked tooth and everything. And I just think to myself, well, I'm certainly going to get around to that real soon. Meaning, not soon at all. It's like when somebody says to you, let's have lunch real soon. And they don't pull out their calendar and make a date. That means this is never going to happen, right? So I'm just sort of thinking, well, I've got time, right? What do you think happens next? I mean, you can fill in the blank. Yeah, and when do you think it happens? Friday afternoon about 5.15. Yeah, right, yeah. Anyway, it wasn't a disaster. I did crack my tooth a couple of years ago, so you don't have to feel sorry for me now. Crack my tooth. It really didn't hurt, but it was a little bit alarming. I called the emergency number. The dentist asked me if I was in pain. I said no. So he made an appointment for me to come in on Monday, and you know how that worked, right? Why am I telling you this in relationship to this, this idea of salvation? I don't know what it is about us, but we're reluctant to come to the light. We're reluctant to come to the truth. There's something in us. There's something in us that prefers the darkness to the light. There's something in us that makes us shy away from hearing God's judgment. I'm convinced that that's one reason uh, that as few people attend church as do in America. Now, it's wonderful that so many do attend church in America. But there are a great many more people in America who believe in God and who believe they're going to heaven than who attend church. Why do you suppose that might be? I think one of the reasons for that is when we say, oh, well, I believe in the Lord. We can fill in the blank any way we want to with the content of God's message. And it's like, we don't come into the light of the community of faith. You know when you come through that door, you're going to feel the love of the community, and you know you're going to hear the Word of God read and preached. And you see, you and I, having come to the Lord, love to be in His presence and we love the light that he shines upon us. We love the light that he shines upon us when it shines upon the goodness that he's created within us. And we love the light that he shines upon us when it shows the things that are not worthy of him that he offers to cleanse us from and help us rise above. We love that but you see there are many who do not love that there are many who would rather be in a dimmer place spiritually so that they can convince themselves in their spiritual darkness that they're just fine that they're as good as or better than their neighbor spiritually. And they don't really want to come to the light of God's word because, you see, God's word is like a plumb line, isn't it? You know how a plumb line works? When you walk up to a wall and you're trying to decide whether that wall is perpendicular or not, if you're building... All you have to do is just drop a plumb line, right? And that's going to show you whether, whether the wall is straight or not. It's going to show you whether the wall is perpendicular or not. There's no fudging against that plumb line. Well, the Word of God is like a plumb line for Christians. And you know what? There are some folks that would just as soon not be measured 
against that plumb line. They would rather stay crooked and call it straight. Amen? Just like honest, I'd kind of rather not go to the dentist and get the x-ray. I would rather, in a sense, just keep on my merry way and say, well, my teeth look okay, and they're not hurting me today, so everything must be okay. Well, that wouldn't be smart dental hygiene, would it? Because the truth is, sometimes we need to do a little preventative maintenance. In the same way, what a good idea it is to come into the light while there's time for us to amend our ways and allow the Lord to show us what needs to change in our lives. Be very suspicious of yourself. If you think to yourself, you'd rather not hear the word preached. You'd rather not attend worship. Be very suspicious of that. Now, I understand that all of us have favorite churches and favorite preachers, and there's nothing wrong with that. And some of us who live here on the Outer Banks, when you move somewhere else, I'm going to call you up and say, how are you doing? And you're going to say, John, I'm doing fine, but I declare it is hard to find a church as good as Duck Church. I'm going to hear, and I do hear all the time, people say, it's just hard. To, I got spoiled at Duck Church. And the truth is, this is a wonderful congregation. But even though we may have a favorite church, it's very important that we attend worship so that we can hear the Word of God read and preached so that the light of God can shine upon our hearts and lives, not to others, but to us, so that we can hear the convicting word of the Holy Spirit inwardly, and so that we can see there's something in my heart and life that needs to change. You know, in the Old Testament, the Jews had the idea, not exclusively, but significantly, that God was angry and that somehow God had to be appeased. Somehow or other, they had the idea that all these rules had to be followed and that God was interested in making people go through these intricate rules to please him. Jesus came to tell us and to live before us the reality. God doesn't dislike you. God doesn't hate you. God loves you just as you are. God loves you just as you are. Yes, you're fractured. Yes, you're broken. Yes, you're imperfect. Everyone is. If God only loved perfect people, he would love no one but himself. If God only loved the perfect, he'd love no one but Jesus Christ. But the scripture tells us God so loved the world, the world. Not just you and me, not just Methodists, not just Baptists, not just Episcopalians, not just Roman Catholics, pagans, Hindus, Muslims. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. When the scripture is telling us this, it's telling us that as we are in the natural, there is within us the seeds of death and the propensity of death. There is within us 
that which is sinful and that which needs to be brought into the light and cured and healed. God sent Jesus Christ so that our sins might be both identified and forgiven. Because you see, as we stand in the light of Jesus and of his word, as we compare ourselves with Jesus, we see within us that which is unlovely and unworthy. And we say to him, Lord, I'd like to be more like you. I'd like to be more loving in my heart. I'd like to be more holy in my heart. Will you please come into my heart anew and afresh? Wash away, cleanse that which is unworthy, and fill me with the love and the light of God. When we do this, when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior in this way, we receive the gift that God wants us to have, the gift of eternal life, not because we deserve it, we don't, but because his love for us is so surpassing. He wants everyone to know this loving relationship with him. Jesus says, I didn't come to the world to condemn the world, but that the whole world might be saved. Now, how is God going to work out the salvation of the whole world? I don't pretend to have any idea. All I know is that the scripture tells us that Jesus is the savior of the world. Is he your savior? If he's your savior, I know you hear these words with such joy and such gratitude. And if you're not sure that he's your savior, may I say that your salvation is too important not to be sure of? It reminds me a little of when I was a boy. We'd get in the car to go somewhere overnight maybe vacation, or maybe just Aunt Merle's and Uncle Joel's in Chapel Hill. But we'd get in the car to go somewhere overnight. Invariably, we would get about 10 minutes down the road, and Mother would say, George, you know, I'm not sure whether I, and then you can fill in the blank. It would be either, I'm not sure if I unplug the iron, I'm not sure if I unplug the coffee pot, or I'm not sure that the stove is off. It was one of those three things, like clockwork. Daddy would turn the car around, we'd go back to the house, and mother would go in, and she would check whatever it was that she was not sure of, probably all three, just to make sure. We'd get in the car, and then we would proceed on our journey. This happened over and over but you know what? Some things are too important not to make sure of. Some things are too important not to make sure of. And your salvation is one of those things. Our salvation is so simple and yet so profound. In fact, it's so simple that sometimes sophisticated people believe it can't be true. And yet it is. It's as simple as getting up out of your seat, coming up to the altar, and kneeling and praying and asking Jesus to be your Lord and Savior. That's how simple it is. I will say it doesn't have to be at this altar. It can be while you're walking on the beach. It can be at home in your bed while you're praying. But you know, Jesus said, if you acknowledge me before men, I will acknowledge you before my Father in heaven. And so I would say to you that I don't think you're here by accident today on daylight saving time morning. I think the Lord Jesus called you here by the power of your Holy Spirit 
to celebrate his great love in so many ways and to make sure of your salvation. I've been saved repeatedly, just by the way. I was saved the first time when I was about five. I went to the altar and accepted the Lord. I was saved again one summer at camp. Can I tell you about that? I shall. I was at camp, and um, one of the counselors was an older lady named Aunt Sarah. And we're all gathered around Aunt Sarah, and she says, Boys and girls, how many of you have ever been standing beside your mama when she was frying chicken? Everybody raise their hand. Back then, mothers fried chicken. They didn't buy it at Hardee's, right? Everybody raise their hand. Well, as you were standing around your mama and she was frying that chicken, have you ever had a little bit of that grease just pop out and burn you? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Hurts, doesn't it? Yes, it, it really does. Well, that's what hell is going to be like. <laughs> Only it's not just going to be one little place. It's going to be all over your whole body, and it's going to last for eternity. Now, who wants to be saved? <laughs> I got saved again that day. <laughs> and for sure, I had to get saved when Billy Graham came to town. Well, and the reason is some things are too important not to make sure of. Yeah. You know, today, the Lord Jesus offers his invitation to everyone who would like to make sure of their salvation. And so the altar is open for you to come. I'm going to say... Don't wait too long if you want to do it because the closing hymn is not real short, but it's not real long. So if you want to do this, don't delay. Uh, come on to the altar. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll kneel and pray with you too. Sound good? What's the number of our closing hymn? 298. Let's stand up and sing it.
receive this benediction now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the throne of grace with exceeding joy. Unto the only wise God be honor, glory, dominion, and power. And may the love of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you now and forever. Amen. Amen.